and welcome to TL Physics and today I am going to talk about graphing radial electric fields. So first of all I'm actually going to do look at <coughs> here I'm going to do look at electric field strength. We're going to look at this at the letter E. So <coughs> as you can see here I've got the formula for electric field strength which is force per unit charge and in a radial field the field strength is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over r squared. Okay. And this is important. This Q here is the thing affected by the field. Okay, so it's the force that the, an object in the field would feel. And this charge here would be the, for, uh, the thing causing the field. Okay. So as you can see here, if the, this is a constant, and if my charge is constant, that's causing the field, that I have a relationship that E is proportional to 1 over R squared, which is also known as the inverse square rule. But of course, this does depend on if the charge is positive or negative. Okay? So field strength here, if I have a positive charge, I'm going to do a positive in blue. Okay? I'll have a field strength when I'm zero away. I would have infinite field strength here. So when I'm at the surface of the charge or in the centre of the charge, I would have maximum field strength. And then as I tend to zero, this will tend to infinity. Okay? So if I look at this here, so as this gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this will tend this tends to zero, this will tend to is this tends to infinity, this will tend to zero. It would look like this. Okay? So this here is oops, that E is proportional to 1 over R squared. For a negative charge, for a negative field, I'm going to do this in green, this would be the case here. And the reason being, what the field strength dictates is the direction of that field, the direction that the force that the object would feel. So in this case, if I put a positive test charge in here, the field strength will be pushing it outwards along the field lines. If <coughs> I'm going to put it into a charge here, in a negative charge, all right, the field strength would, the field would be trying to pull it in, which is why it's a negative field because it's going in the opposite direction. Okay? So, that there is field strength, okay? Now, what we need to do here is actually want to look at this idea of potential Potential is 1 over 4 pi Q over R. And again, much like its argument here, if I took and have positive and negative, and negative here, potential and R, I would have a similar thing here. Uh, that I would have a negative and I would have a positive here. But as you can see, the steepness of my curve, my dip of my curve is much smaller because here potential is proportional to 1 over R. And of course this is a negative charge and this is a positive charge. But what I want to do today is actually have a look at this. That if I took this potential, electric potential, and I divided it by R, so I'm going to go 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R, all over R, I would end up with 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R squared. So what this is saying here is if I divided, if I took the potential at a point and divided it by a radius at a point, I could work out the field strength. This is important because this actually means from this graph here, this potential R graph, I can actually work out the field strength. Because if I change this up to a little something you might recognise, the change in Y over the change in X equals the gradient, That means here, the gradient of this line would be the field strength. So if I took a point here and drew a line, so let's grab a ruler, here we go. Draw a lovely tangent like that. Change in Y over the change in X. So the change in Y is the change in potential. The change in x is the change in radius. Those divided by each other 
equals field strength <coughs> there. Okay, so as you can see here, these lines for the positive charge are always in the positive orientation, which is why the field strength is always positive. In the negative one, the gra gradient of this is always in the negative orientation, which is why the values for electric field strength, electric field strength are always negative. Okay, so what you might be asked is how to use these graphs um, with uh, formulae. So this here is graphically representing electric field strength and electric potential and the relationship in between of these. Okay, so just when you're looking at your, when you're given a graph and you're asked to analyse it, have a look at it. Is the potential negative? If the potential or the electric field strength is negative, that means the charge is negative. Okay, and then go, okay, so they're asking me to work out the electric field strength. I've been given a potential one. Have a look, go, all right, if I took the gradient of that point, change in potential over change in R, oh, wait a minute, I've got the electric field strength out. So when you are using graphs, you are really interested in the gradient or the area underneath, okay? So that is the graphical representation of radial electric fields.